The seventh implication of the shloka is that it involves exercise of a moral choice. When a person pushes his karam phalam motive into the background and follows the karyam karam motive, he is making a conscious moral choice. Moral choice distinguishes humans from animals. Animals act on instincts and do not make moral choices. Humans, on the other hand, stand between animals and gods. In certain actions, they make moral choices, but in certain other actions, they act on instinct. We can graphically represent it like this. There is a line below which is the animal kingdom. Below this line, there is no scope for a moral choice because actions are guided by instincts. Above the line is the realm of the moral choice. Man straddles across this line. Some of his actions are controlled by instincts and some by a moral choice. To the extent that he is guided by his moral choices, he approaches Godhood. Free will is a prerequisite of the moral choice. Unless free will is given, a moral choice cannot be exercised. That is why in the 47th shloka of the second chapter, Lord Krishna says, Karmaniyev adhikaraste. That is, karma is your right. What you are going to do will be decided by you and only by you. When God himself says, the right to decide what you shall do lies entirely with you. Even I cannot interfere with this right. There could hardly be a greater statement of free will. Some people may feel that there is a contradiction between this shloka and the 33rd shloka of the 11th chapter, where Lord Krishna says, I have already destroyed all these people. You have just to become an instrument and gain glory. He says, Maya eva ete nihataha purva meva. That is, they have already been slain by me. Let us try to resolve this seeming contradiction with the help of an example. Let us say that a judge awards death sentence to a criminal. When the criminal is brought for execution before the jailer, the jailer refuses to execute him, saying that killing is a sin and he doesn't want to commit that sin. At that time, the judge tells him that the orders for death have already been issued. If this jailer does not execute it, another jailer is going to execute. In that sense, the jailer is only an instrument in the implementation of the order. This is what this shloka means. God as the supreme judge takes decisions. We as instruments have the free will to decide whether we shall implement those decisions or somebody else will implement them. The free will extends only to the execution of the orders, execution of God's decisions. It does not extend to taking God's decisions. God takes decisions which have to be implemented in this human world and therefore they can be implemented only through human beings. Therefore, for the implementation of these orders of God, human instrumentation becomes necessary. That is the meaning of Arjun becoming an instrument for the implementation of the decision taken by God to destroy the evil forces. When you become an instrument in the hands of God, you submit all your actions to Him. In the 30th shloka of the third chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chetasa Nirashir Nirmamo Bhutva Yujjasva Vigatajjaraha. Here, Sarvani means all, Karmani means actions. Mai Sanyasya means surrendering or submitting to me. Adhyatma Chetasa means with a spiritual mindset. Nirashir Nirmamo Bhutva means not exercising ownership 
over your actions. In other words, Lord Krishna says, do not consider your actions as yours. Submit them to me. To wrap up the discussion on the shloka, let us get back to our slide on the different levels of existence. Those human beings who are attached to the world and its pleasures get bound to the world by stronger and stronger bonds. Many who wish to attain moksha withdraw from the world and become a kriyaha or inactive. They also perform rituals to propitiate gods and to cleanse the sins of past life so that they may rise up in the spiritual ladder and attain moksha. These people are called sannyasis. There are others who practice physical and mental discipline to distance themselves from the pleasures of the world and connect with God. They are called yogis. In this shloka, Lord Krishna advocates an alternate method of distancing oneself from attachment to the world. That is by becoming an instrument of God's moral order. Once you surrender yourself to this moral order, you attain the spiritual pedestal of the sannyasi and the yogi, although you might neither withdraw from the world nor perform rituals. This surrender to God is by performing one's karyam karam and then surrendering it to God. Such people are called karma yogis.